This is Dr. Brian Mann coming at you from the University of Miami. <clears throat> In one of my uh, master's classes, we were uh, going over some of the NSCA material about training volume, and I thought that this might be something interesting. So we've got, again, some of the NSCA slides and some material that I pulled in from, uh, from other sources as well. This slide happens to be one of those uh, NSCA slides where we're talking about volume and, and multiple versus single sets. Now, single set training may be appropriate for untrained individuals or during the first several months of training, especially if you're coming after a layoff because you need uh, the ability to recover is something that's going to be extremely important for training. Now, many studies, though, indicate that higher volumes are necessary to promote further gains in strength, especially for intermediate and advanced resistance trained athletes. And again, that's if strength and hypertrophy are the main goals. So again, the, the goal is always to keep the goal the goal. <clears throat> now, I also want to uh, take a moment and, and break apart from uh, a single set to failure versus multiple single set uh, protocol. So like uh, many times when people talk about single set training, they talk about that the people only do one set of one exercise to failure. Now, some single set training uh, isn't that at all, where um, you typically somebody might have done for the posterior chain, maybe they did uh, three sets of eight glute ham raises and three sets of eight uh, hyperextensions, and that was it. Well, uh, sometimes people will do like a set of back extension with normal, a uh, set with back extension with twists, a set with uh, uh, holding the back extension and twisting the entire time, so a Russian twist. Uh, maybe they do some Romanian deadlifts, some good mornings, and uh, a set of leg curls. Well, then that's six different angles from which that you're hitting the uh, the that same muscle group. So that's really not a single set approach. So I, I wanted to, to delineate between those two. Um, is one set done? Yeah, but it's one set at multiple different angles. So uh, realize that that's not what we're referring to here. Uh, if the computer will co uh, cooperate. So one good thing, good source to look at is a study by uh, Dr. Matt Ray, uh, Brent Alvar, his uh, supervisor, uh, uh, Lee Burkett, and Stephen Ball, who happened to be one of my uh, PhD advisors. And this is a meta-analysis to determine the dose response for strength development. So what's the purpose? Well, the purpose is the identification of a quantifiable dose response relationship for strength training. Uh, and that's important to uh, to the prescription of proper training programs. You need to know what's ideal for different populations. So whenever they did the meta-analysis, they went and they found, hey man, for the intensity, for somebody getting stronger, what does it need to be? Uh, and that we see that there's a, a definite difference here. Now remember, effect size basically shows like how you know, what is the, the most important? You know, what is the, the biggest impact? So uh, significance tells you if there's a significant difference or not. And effect size says how big, how important is that difference? Now, we look at the untrained, and we see that, man, all of it's got a good effect size, except for whenever we get over, you know, about, oh, let's call it 85%. Uh, and then some, and it dips around a little bit at the 70%. Why? Well, it could just be the studies that were investigated. Uh, and even that, you know, we could even go up to, yeah, 85% is over one, and 70, 75% it's still over one. So really it's just the super heavy loads that the untrained aren't going to do well with, and that makes sense because they don't have the ability to utilize the high threshold motor units for the most part. That comes with training. There was two peaks one at about 60%, and that's obviously the highest, and another one around 75-80%. The 60%, well, this makes perfect sense for an untrained individual. Uh, if you look at the work by Kaneko, you see that at 60%, there's equal improvements in the force into the spectrum and the velocity into the spectrum. So it's a Goldilocks load, and then in Goldilocks, I mean uh, it's not too hot, it's not too cold, it's just right. So it's a Goldilocks load for those who are attempting to improve uh, everything. Well, for strength 
and a trained lifter, well, they're going to obviously need, they're going to be more towards the force end of the spectrum. Those velocity specific adaptations, for the most part, aren't going to make as big of a improvement for them in terms of strength. So that 80, 85% is going to be the sweet spot for them. Uh, so we can see that, hey, the yes, the untrained and the trained do vary. And if I'm trying to get somebody strong who's untrained, I want to go with lighter loads. Uh, I want to go 60%. And maybe even after layoffs, I'll go 60%. If I've got somebody who's trained, got to go 80% and above. Now, how often for the training? How many sessions per week for the uh, body part, so to speak? Well, for the untrained individual, it was the more the better. You know, uh, one through three, it just saw a linear increase, which is fantastic. Now, for an advanced trainee, one is not enough, so nobody ever does one. Two seems to be the sweet spot, and then three might be a bit much. Uh, now, of course, it does matter how the, uh, the study was done and how they did the body part training, etc. But, man, we, we're basically what we're seeing is, yeah, three sessions, you still are being effective, but we're quite more effective with two, almost twice as effective with simply having two sessions a week uh, for per body part, for segment. So we see here, more is better for the untrained, but more is not better for a trained individual. So if we're looking at volume, two days a week trained, three days a week untrained. So this is really why we look at the split routines, uh, because, hey, we need more training session, we need fewer training sessions, but our training sessions are more intense. So we're gonna have to split that up some other way. Now let's look at the sets. Well, as we see across all sets, excluding six, there was a greater effect size for the untrained than there were for the trained. And we see for the untrained and trained that four sets seems to be ideal. But let's look at this. A single set for an untrained individual is just as effective as four sets for a trained. Now, with this, keeping this in mind, whenever you first start training somebody, you can get a tremendous amount of adaptation with a single set, as was discussed before. What about the single set for the trained individuals? Doesn't do much. Two and three sets had the same results, and four sets was the peak. Now, the effect size for two and three is about one, and uh, between three and four is probably you know one and a quarter or 1.15 so yeah, is the juice worth the squeeze uh, you know maybe you can get away with doing two sets on exercises instead of four especially if you're in a time crunched situation uh, maybe it is due to time parameters from the NCAA uh, that you or because you're trying to do so many different exercises or do, do so many different things two is just nearly as effective as four two is definitely as effective as three but we're uh, we're going to be increasing that and in looking now this meta-analysis demonstrated different responses based on the training status of the participants again 60 percent maximizes the gains for untrained 80 percent for those who are trained Frequency, three days a week for untrained, twice a week for trained. Four sets was the maximum in both trained and untrained, which was interesting because we see one set uh, is best for uh, non-trained individuals. Actually, we didn't even say that earlier. We just said that it was effective, and obviously it was effective. It was as effective for four, as four sets with your trained individuals. So it's just, what is the time? You know, everything falls into context. Now, it is appropriate for an athlete to perform only one or two sets as a beginner, and he or she should add sets as they become better trained. Uh, training volume is directly based on the resistance training goal, of course. Uh, we see goals per, uh, goal repetitions and sets. Strength, less than or equal to six repetitions. So really, you're looking at about, oh, was that 82%? Uh, 80 per, somewhere around 82-85% on up uh, 2 to 6 sets power uh, these are based off of weightlifting derivatives uh, not the um, uh, power if we were doing uh, like doing a squat for power instead so we're typically looking at 1 to 2 repetitions for single effort events like shot put uh, discus etc 3 to 5 sets 
the multiple effort, we're looking three to five repetitions, three to five sets. So the set stays the same, but the repetitions uh, increases for multiple effort events because you have to go on to be able to repeat it over and over and over again. Hypertrophy, six to 12 repetitions, three to six sets, muscular endurance, more than 12 and two to three sets. Now, strength and power. Uh, volume assignments for a power trainer are typically lower than those for strength training. Uh, well, it, it's all about the quality. It's about the speed of movement. Uh, if we start slowing down the movement, well, power is force times velocity. So if the velocity decreases, power decreases, and then you're not training power any longer. Uh, hypertrophy, uh, increases in muscular size are associated with higher training volumes or performing three or more exercises per muscle group. Uh, you think back to the time under tension, uh, and that's what we're looking at here. And muscular endurance, 12 or more repetitions, light loads, fewer sets, little rest, and just keep rolling. Now, if we just quickly talk about the rest periods, man, you know, it's, it's, the length is variable, and it's highly dependent on the goal of the training. Uh, is it uh, power, strength, hypertrophy? The, the relative load lifted, uh, it's going to take longer to recover from a set of 95% than it will a set of 65%. And the athlete's training status. So here we look at the rest intervals. You know, strength and power, both two to five minutes. Uh, hypertrophy, 30 seconds to a minute and a half. We really want to maximize our lactate production to increase the uh, hormones, uh, the, uh, uh, pro, you know, the IGFs, uh, the testosterone, etc. cetera. Uh, and strength and power, well, the longer that you go, I'm sorry, the, the strength and power, the longer that you rest, well, the higher quality repetitions that you're going to have especially if we're looking at the short burst type things because those look at phosphocreatine and that's phosphocreatine stores to reach back to 100 percent can take six to eight minutes if they're completely depleted now you're probably especially in power you're not going to completely deplete your pcr your phosphocreatine stores uh in a single set uh, but they will get depleted over time and then you end up needing longer and longer rests at the later sets to maintain performance so this is just, you know, it's the law of mass action, guys. Uh, and the law of mass action is going to drive what energy system you're utilizing and what the rest is going to be. Hypertrophy, again, 30 seconds to a minute and a half. we got to spike that lactate. The muscular endurance, hey, man, it's about performing under fatigue. So, again, short rest. If you like this information and you want more, uh, you can, of course, find us at sites.education.miami.edu. Uh, we've got... As we mentioned in all the other videos, we've got an undergrad in exercise physiology uh, that will get you ready for strength and conditioning, uh, physical therapy, medicine, uh, whatever the, uh, the choice happens to be. Uh, we have a master's in strength and conditioning here uh, under myself and Dr. Brian Biagioli, who's the program director. And we've also got some online continuing education programs that are getting ready to drop any day now. Uh, and that's something I'm super excited about. You'll, they are going to be uh, available for continuing education units through the NSCA. Uh, and we'll look to do it for other organizations as well. Uh, so hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully you got something out of it. Uh, this is Brian Mann signing off until next time.